Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. The Waco History Podcast is sponsored by Brotherwell Brewery on Historic Bridge Street in Waco. Welcome to the Waco History Podcast. We're going to air for you over the next few months a special series of Waco History Living Stories. Uh, these were segments that were originally aired on KWBU here in Waco. Uh, they were produced by the Institute for Oral History editor, Michelle Holland, and narrated by two fabulous narrators, uh, Louis Mazze and Kim Patterson. And so these highlight oral histories from the collection of the Institute for Oral History at Baylor University, which I direct, which has been around since 1970 and has over a thousand interviews related to Waco and McLennan County history, and we're happy to highlight those here. The terrors of the playground bullies. Let's hear some stories of bullies from the archives of the Institute for Oral History. Bullies are people who try to harm or intimidate others who they perceive as weaker. It starts in childhood. Maggie Langham Washington moved to Waco in the fifth grade and remembers how she was an easy target for bullies. If you were a minister's child that's new in a school, you saw a hard time, a real hard time, because kids would do things to you just because they felt like you weren't supposed to do anything back to them. Because you were ministers, you preacher's child, preacher's brat. And uh, after a while, that got a little old with me. I decided that I wanted to be a regular person. Washington recalls a story involving a girl who others had told her was cruel. And we were playing pass ball. And I was a tomboy. I could jump, <laughs> leap high, and get that ball. So she decided to let me guard her. And I heard her. I trembled in my boots. I kept letting her get the ball, and finally I decided this is just not going to work. So when I knew they were throwing the ball to her, I just stepped in front of her and jumped up and got it. And she hit me. When I realized what was happening, uh, the, supervi- the, the lady that was supervising the game, Mrs. Bevis, one of the teachers, was tapping me on my shoulder, saying, uh-huh. Langham, Langham, that's enough. So that called for spanking. I knew that. So it was reported to my homeroom teacher. We were both in the same class. And my homeroom teacher carried me into the cloakroom. And she says, every time I hit something, you holler. (laughs) And I did. And then when it came time to get Henrietta, every time she hit, she needed to holler. So nobody in my class ever knew I didn't get a spank. Uh Uh-huh. Yours was all dramatics. Yes. Mary Darden of Waco describes an encounter with a bully in sixth grade in Connecticut that helped shape her passion for social justice. And he was beating the crud out of this kid. I mean, the kid was bleeding, and nobody, everybody was standing around, nobody doing anything about it. I went running in, and I pushed the kid out of the way that he was beating up, and I got in a fight with him, and I started fighting with him, and he... He hurt me. He, I mean, I, I had a black eye, I'm sure, and what, I mean, I was, my face showed it. I mean, you could tell for a week afterwards I'd been in a fight. But I stood there and fought him until the teacher came out and broke us up. And, and I realized at that point that I was not probably going to draw a line, you know, between my personal safety and, you know, that I would take a stand. Bullying shows no signs of dissipating, especially with today's cyberculture that offers even more methods of terrorizing others. Although bullying is often dismissed as a normal part of growing up, it is harmful, and in some cases, the effects last a lifetime. 
Thanks for listening to the Waco History Podcast. Like what you heard? Subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes so we can reach more listeners. You can find show notes and info on every episode at wacohistorypodcast.com and more info on Waco's past at wacohistory.org. Our theme music, used with permission, is Cross the Brazos at Waco, performed by the late Billy Walker. For more info on Billy's music, go to billywalker.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. This has been a Rogue Media Network production. Thank you.